All right, uh, this is one more example from chapter 11. The example is spherical. We have never touched anything spherical, right? So let's do something about it. This is double shell. You have spherical shell outside and you have spherical shell inside. Area around here is air. Okay? Suppose you have air coming in into the inside cavity of shell and the shell itself is porous. That's mean the if the shell allows gas to flow through. So you have gas input here flowing through the shell outward to this empty space and then go on moving outward another shell. Okay? If temperature of the inner shell is Tk, temperature of outside is T0. If we are interested in two things, first temperature profile inside this shell and the heat amount of heat removed by the air. How should we start? In here, again, we have convection, we have conduction, right? And in this problem, convection is somehow important. So we need to consider the equation for momentum balance as well. All right? Let's assume that the gas itself has constant density. So we can employ Navier-Stokes equation. Okay? So let's start by assuming the density and viscosity of the gas does not change much within the range of temperature. And therefore, we can solve for velocity profile first. So start by every time, in this case, we start using equation of continuity first, right? But before we're doing that, you need to consider uh, velocity components. We have three velocity components in spherical coordinates. Vr, V theta, V phi. Are you, do you know anything about spherical coordinate? Do you know R direction? So VR means velocity components that flow from the center toward outside of the shell, right? That's VR. What about V theta? In cylindrical coordinates, if you write a sphere, and if I have axis like this, suppose this is x, y, z, okay? Any point from the center toward, let's say I have a point of interest, this direction is r direction, okay? Now, Suppose this point can be projected here from x axis and y axis you get the point of projection. Okay? This point and that point are aligned along z direction. You can say that this is this point may be like a shadow of this point. Okay? The angle here from x axis to this point within plane, within xy plane, is considered theta. That's theta. Okay? So if you have theta equal to zero, it means the point here is moved down here along the x direction. Then you have another angle 
called phi. Phi is vertical angle from the z axis down to the to this line. So just like if you have x and y, right? The angle along this plane is theta. The angle along this plane is phi. So the coordinate is described by three coordinates, r, theta, and phi. Okay? So again, vr would be velocity from center outward, that's vr. v theta would be the rotation in plane, x, y plane. And v phi would be rotation in vertical plane. Okay? So, can you determine is vr is zero? In this case, no, it's not. Is v theta zero? Is it zero? Yes. In this case, it is zero. Is v phi zero? Yes. In this case, v phi is zero. Okay. For VR, or never mind, can you just guess that VR is function of what? Does it change with R? Does VR, of, is VR a function of R? Should be. Is VR a function of theta? No. Is VR a function of phi? No. All right. So up to this point, we determine velocity components, which one is zero, which one is not. Then we can start using equation of continuity, which is a mass balance. This is equation of continuity for spherical coordinates. You should notice there is a sign here, a little bit more complicated. So let's start dropping terms. First term, is it zero? Zero here by steady state assumption. Vr is not zero. Does it change with r? Yes, so this term must be kept. V zeta is zero. V phi here is zero as well. So even though you are not sure whether or not Vr is function of R, you can still get it from equation of continuity. Okay? So reducing this equation of continuity, you should end up with 1 over r squared, total differentiation, because I know right now that vr is function of only one component. All right? If you integrate it, you get rho r squared vr equal to constant. Of course, VR itself is not constant. Only constant when you multiply by R squared. Okay? Because as you go from the center, the area is expanded. The linear velocity cannot be kept constant. Only the mass flow rate can be constant. Okay, that's why VR is not constant, but multiplication of VR and R squared is constant. Okay, 
if you change this in terms of mass flow rate, you can determine, I mean, define WR, which is called linear um, radius mass flow rate. This is radius, radial, I'm sorry, mass flow rate. 